Operational amplifiers, or op-amps, are fundamental building blocks of analog electronics. They're used to amplify signals, process analog information, and are found in almost every electronic device you can think of. But what exactly is an op-amp, and how does it work? Let's break it down, step by step. An op-amp, or operational amplifier, is a high-gain voltage amplifier with two inputs, one inverting and one non-inverting, and a single output. Applying positive voltage at inverting input reduces the output voltage and is denoted by a negative sign. Applying positive voltage at the non-inverting input increases the output voltage and is denoted by a plus sign. Its job is to amplify the voltage difference between the two inputs. In real world, op-amps require a power supply. The output voltage can swing close to these supply limits, but not all the way, unless it's a rail-to-rail op-amp. The DC relation between input and output voltage is shown here. Since the value of gain, A, is high, the linear relation shown holds only for a small region of VIP minus, VIM. Beyond that, output saturates near power supply. An ideal op-amp has infinite gain at all frequencies, infinite input impedance, zero output impedance. Real op-amps have finite gain from 10 to more than 100,000. However, this high gain varies with temperature and manufacturing process, so not very predictable. That is why op-amps are rarely used in open loop. Op-amps are typically used in closed loop or negative feedback mode, where output signal is connected back to the inverting input terminal with some attenuation. This attenuation factor is called beta. The value of beta can range from one to one milli. The overall gain reduces significantly but becomes very predictable. Now the gain becomes temperature and manufacturing process independent. Some examples of negative feedback circuits are shown below. Op-amps can be configured as buffer or voltage followers, inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, summing circuits, and more. As you can see in the top left, if A is 100,000, the difference between the two inputs is 9.9 .9 microvolts, which is very small. The negative feedback establishes a virtual short between the two inputs. If there is no negative feedback, the operational amplifier behaves as a comparator or a Schmidt trigger. The name operational amplifier comes from its original use before the digital era, where it performed mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, integration, and differentiation in analog computers. Op-amp manufacturers provide a data sheet in which we can note the key parameters of op-amps. Key parameters to consider include supply voltage, input common mode range, output voltage swing, gain bandwidth product, which determine the speed of the op-amp, input bias and offset current, input offset voltage, DC loop gain, common mode rejection ratio, voltage and current noise and power supply rejection ratio, these parameters must be checked before selecting an op-amp for use. To analyze circuits with operational amplifiers and negative feedback, there are two golden rules. Number one, the op-amp tries to keep the input terminals at same voltage potential through output voltage feedback. It is also called virtual short rule. Number two, no current is flowing through the inputs. If we keep these two golden rules in mind, we can analyze almost any op-amp circuits with ease. Let's understand this with an example. What will be the voltage at the output terminal of the op-amp? First, we check if the op-amp is operating with negative feedback. Since part of the output is connected back to the inverting input, the answer is yes, it's a negative feedback configuration. Now, by the first golden rule of op-amps, the voltage at the inverting input will match the non-inverting input which is one volt. That means one volt appears across resistor RG, causing a current of one milliamp to flow through it. Next, using the second golden rule, no current flows into the op-amp input, so that same one milliamp must flow through resistor RF instead. Applying KVL, we find that the output must be at three volts to maintain the required current flow. So the final output voltage is three volts. We also see that the input voltage is amplified three times from one volt to three volt. To summarize, op-amps are essential components in analog electronics. 
With them, you can design amplifiers, filters, sensors, etc. Want to go deeper into electronics design? Check out our channel and visit analogcircuitdesign.com. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more such simplified tutorials.